I created an AI workflow that can turn you into anything you want. Disney, video games, anime, and with the power of this cutting edge AI technology, it is even possible to turn you into an old PS1 style video game character? Wow! I've run hundreds of tests to bring you the best beginner-friendly plug-and-play solution for any type of shot. I've also used a brand new model that enables super-fast generation speeds and I've spent a lot of time perfecting the lip movement. You've been living in a dream world, Neo. This is the world as it exists today. So if you appreciate this kind of work, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future AI deep dives. If you haven't already, you'll first need to install ComfyUI, a node-based interface for stable diffusion. And I know it looks complicated, but I'll walk you through each step of the process and you will see that it's actually quite easy to use. Use the link in the video description to go to this ComfyUI installation page. Right-click on this link and select Save Link As and choose a folder in which you would like to install ComfyUI. Use 7-zip or WinRAR to extract the content. This folder now contains your ComfyUI directory and you can delete the zip one. Next, download the ComfyUI manager. You will also find the link in the video description. Extract that file into your ComfyUI directory and run it. Now you can click run NVIDIA GPU and ComfyUI will start in your browser. So now you can download my free Disney example workflow from my Patreon page and just drag and drop that into the ComfyUI interface. And you will get a warning and see that a lot of nodes are red because they are missing, but it's super easy to install them. Just go to the ComfyUI manager and click install missing custom nodes. Select them all and click install. Once it's done, click restart ComfyUI. It will now take some time as it is downloading additional files for all the custom nodes. Next, we need to install some models and I have prepared this list for you which contains all the models you need and where to place them in your ComfyUI folder structure. So just download all these models, place them in the right folders, click refresh in your ComfyUI interface and you're ready to start generating. The settings I used are pretty well tested for any type of close-up shot, so you basically just have to go to load video, select your video and click on Q prompt. When you first run it, it will probably take some time because it has to load all the models and create the control net sequences. But it only needs to do that once per shot. So after that, you can iterate and test out things a lot faster. And once it's done, you should have a pretty cool result. Hello, this is a test. But there are still a lot of things that you can test out and tweak. So let me quickly walk you through the workflow. When you first want to test things out, I recommend reducing the frame load cap of your sequence to like 15 frames or so. Also, feel free to choose a higher resolution to get better results here. I don't have the best graphics card, so I have to keep mine pretty low. After your video has been loaded, it is fed into the IP adapter setup. And the IP adapter basically takes an image and converts it into a sort of prompt that guides image generation. Until recently, we only could use single images for video sequences, but user Inner Reflections, who also developed the original ComfyUI workflows, found a way to use the entire image sequence as an IP adapter. Basically, every single frame of the original sequence gets transformed into a prompt for that specific generated frame, allowing for never-before-seen coherence in our AI videos. You can change the IP adapter model to only look at your face, which allows for more creativity in the areas around you. But I wanted the whole image to look similar to the input video, so I used this model. An old PS1 style video game character? Wow! Changing the prompt weight probably has the greatest effect. The higher the weight, the closer the generated video will be to the original video. And higher noise values let your prompt shine through a little more. Speaking of prompts, below here you can enter your positive and negative prompt. I usually keep them very simple as the model and the IP adapter do a lot of the heavy lifting, but still mention all the things that you want to see and not want to see in your positive and negative prompt. 
Here's our animated div setup and we don't have to change anything here, but make sure that this model, the new LCM model is selected here. Finally, you can tweak the settings in your sampler. And since we are using this new LCM model for animated div, we are able to use as little as four steps, speeding up the whole generation process immensely. But I usually still go for around eight steps for better quality. Video games. The CFG tells the sampler how much it should follow the prompt and you should keep that between 1.5 and 2. But the most important setting is the start at step, basically the strength of the overall effect. If you enter the total number of steps, like 8 in my case, nothing changes. But the earlier you set the start step for denoising, the stronger the effect will be. I recommend values between 1 and 3 for the best results, but it really depends on the model that you're using and how close you want your video to be to the original one. And security to my new empire! Your new empire? If you want to use this workflow with a different type of shot without lip sync, you can disable all of these nodes by selecting them and pressing Ctrl B. I created this whole part just to fix the lip sync because it was so hard to get it right in these AI generated videos. We're in King's Cross, you say? I think if you so desired, you'll be able to board a train. In short, this first part tracks your face and creates a blurred mask for the mouth. Then I use this mask here to lower the value of the latent noise around the mouth, so that the denoising effect will not be so strong for the mouth and it will be closer to the original video. Next I created a canny node that finds the edges in the video and used the mask to mask out the mouth specifically, so I can then feed it into a control net with maximum strength, bringing the mouth even closer to the original video. We're in King's Cross, you say? I think if you so desired, you'll be able to board a train. But if you don't have a talking character in your sequence, you don't need this part and can instead activate this other control net that I've included in the workflow. It uses the new Depth Anything model, which guesses the distance from the pixels to the camera and uses that to control the image generation. And just like the other control net, the DW Pose Estimator that tracks the movement of our subject, this will take some time when you first run it. But it is definitely worth the wait. For shots like this one, without any subjects, you can also deactivate the DW Pose Estimator and only use the Depth Control Net. Now, if you want to use this workflow to create other styles than this Pixar 3D animation, you can check out civitai.com to find other cool models. For example, this anime model here. Download it, place it under the checkpoint folder in your ComViewi folder structure, click refresh and load it under load checkpoint. Change the prompt a little bit to be closer to the style that you're going for and click Q prompt. It really is that simple and I can't wait to see what you will create with it. If you like this video, consider supporting me on Patreon. As a member, you'll have access to the community Discord, all the other workflows that I use to create the test shots, as well as an even more detailed step-by-step -step guide for this workflow, because this video was just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with it. Thank you very much for your support and see you next time.